Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Motors and Blowers. Good morning. As you guys know from my previous episode on my Skidoo Formula MX snowmobile, I'm making slow but constant progress on getting this all fixed up. Uh, I did get this running. And uh, recently I just uh, welded the spindles on the steering ski on the left side. And now I have fixed my steering. Fantastic. Didn't spend any money on it. Uh, I recently just uh, put some brackets over here and remounted the hinge of the hood back onto the hood. So now that when you open the hood, it is on both hinges and it's pretty solid as you can see. It doesn't move around or anything. But it sure looks terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> We're going to try to clean this up today and uh, at least get some kind of a plastic coating over here. Uh, I'm going to show you the things that I use to create that. Um, this is pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, I've tried to do some repair jobs on lawn tractors before, but this is just ugly, 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 right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, try to find some gray plastic sheet and just like cut out the matching part that's missing here and then silicone it onto here and then use a um, glue gun, hot glue gun, and kind of seal the cracks around the sides. So first we're going to start off by um, tracing a template to transfer onto the plastic sheet. So I have to find a plastic sheet that would fit this. And also I'll show you uh, how we're gonna do it. So let's first make the template, okay? So I've got like this <laughs> weekly circular and it fits pretty much over the whole thing. You just wanna cover it up. Get some tape just to hold it there for now. So that it doesn't move much. You know what? That's good enough. Okay, now that we got the template made. Oh, looks about right, right? Shape of Louisiana, uh, backwards one. Close enough, you know? So now we'll just cut out the uh, piece. Yesterday, here, so that's the cutout template, right? And it should kind of fit, and it does. Looks pretty good. So now we need to find a gray plastic. Oh. Like a bin lid. Look at that. Pretty good. So you just put that there. And we're going to trace this too. On the plastic now. There we go. Eh, close enough, right? It's not precise, but it's close enough. So I jammed that in there. So that that's this part's holding pretty well, but it's this curve that is difficult to have it stay, you know? And even if I hot glued it, it'll just pop back out again. So 
I've got this paint gun, see? I'm just gonna heat it up and make it more pliable. right now and see it would sort of stay down or at least have less pressure and tension going upwards you know so that the uh glue gun would work so that, i mean that looks pretty good you know way better than before you just want to basically fill up the yuckiness of it hey so how you guys doing uh got a guy who contacted me about seeing my pyt 9000 I had it for a few months. I had the price at 2500 at one time, lowered it to 1875 and sitting there for about a month. Some guy wants to buy it. I think he offered me 1500 I'm ready to get rid of it for 1500 Here we go, just uh, pulled out some stuff. PYT 9000, it's a nice tractor. V-twin, 24 horsepower. LED bulbs. New battery, uh, has a lot of miles on it, <laughs> not miles, hours. It's got a 1371, so I guess I'll let it go. Has a triple bin bagger, good wheels, hydrostatic. I'm gonna see if it starts after a couple of months sitting in the heat. What do you guys think, we'll start? As you guys saw, the guy came to look at it. Um, he's an uh, ex-cop, also NYPD. So we were just talking for a little bit, and then uh, I had it listed for twenty-five hundred. I lowered it to eighteen seventy-five, and had it sit there for the longest time. Had a lot of lowballers offering me like a thousand, twelve hundred, that kind of thing. I almost did the twelve hundred because I just wanted it out of here. You know what I mean? But uh, I still stuck to my guns because I knew I was going to get more as fall nears. It's still in the heart of summer right now, but when fall comes and all those leaves are all over the place, that hard triple bag bin is going to, that bagger is going to be really uh, useful for the fall. You know, I know somebody's going to buy it. But anyway, as an ex-cop, you know, we have a little bit of a, a camaraderie, if you will, you know, not uh, unrealized, whatever. And, you know, he's another MOS, member of service. So um, he said he was, what's a price that you're comfortable with? He said, I'll offer you the 1500 And I was kind of playing the game, whereas I want a little more than 1500 I want to try to squeeze a little bit more out of the 1500 right? So I was like, oh, I don't know. I already dropped it from 2500 to 18 you know, I don't know. So then he's like, he pulls out his phone and starts showing me other tractors. Let's say Nick from Bellport's tractor, right? He goes, oh, this one's only 1200 and of course, a beautiful red craftsman double bin bagger a smaller engine but it looked brand new and that was 1200 so uh, i said you know what you won't be happy unless you satisfy your own curiosity so i'll be here if you want to come back and get it if that thing doesn't work out more power to you you should get what you want if you want to try to save a little bit of money 
but you have to go and see that other one first. So if you don't like that one, you can come back and get mine. Whatever you want to do. It's your decision, not mine, right? So if that's what you want to do, that's fine. So I walk, I leave him. If you're not ready to make an offer right now, go look at the other one. You'll probably like it. So maybe I'll see you later. If not, right, it, it was great meeting you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions, let me know. On my lawn, I go back into my house. I'm like... I'm watching the IndyCar race right now. I don't need any tire kickers wasting my time, at least any more time that I've already done. In my mind, I'm thinking the guy's not gonna buy it because he's just shopping around, you know what I mean? So uh, I go inside, it's hot, it's sweaty. I get ready to sit down on the couch and the doorbell rings. <laughs> so I get back up again, I open the door, it's him. Watch out, 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 watch I was looking on getting 25, you know what I'm saying? And then me dropping it down to 1875, I knew there was going to be people who lowballed me and stuff like that. And 1500, honestly, without even the bagger system, the things I put there, the bagger system itself is about $500. Right. But I understand. Uh, look, look, as long as you understand right, that I'm just a guy. <laughs> He says, uh, you know, the guy with that tractor, he's 40 minutes out east, you know, you want to just do the 1500 for me? And at that point, I'm going, I better take this sale before I got to wait another month or two before some nut comes and offers me decent money for it, you know? Albeit $1,500 is still the most I've ever sold a tractor for, so I'm pretty happy, you know what I mean? Uh, it was a nice tractor. V-twin, 24 horsepower, electric PTO, fully loaded. It's got the bull bar in the front, triple hardback binner, uh, bagger. Uh, I painted the deck. Everything's good on it. It's got four-wheel anti-scalp wheels. You know, it's loaded. But yeah, the seat had a little silicone on it that I put on because the seat was coming off. A few scratches here and there, ba 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 ba. you know. Nevertheless, still a good tractor, you know. I And it runs great. So, got $1,500 for it. The guy apparently printed his own money because they're all fresh $100 bills. You just like to see good old Benjamin Franklin, you know what I mean? And not to mention the fact that I didn't spend a lot of money for it. I put a new battery in it maybe, you know. And I got it for free from my friend Mark. So it's $1,500 for just doing maintenance on it, you know. Well, I fixed some stuff like magneto wire and all that stuff. I think that's what it was. But anyway, good sale. Got rid of it, $1,500. Keep the hustle going. One of my subscribers sent me a new funnel. Because <laughs> I'm sure they've seen me try to struggle trying to put my funnel. This has an extension funnel too. This thing, see? So you can plug it onto here. I think that's how it works. Uh, I'll figure out how it works, but I think you can put this extension there. So. My scooter, I was having a dickens of a time trying to fill my scooter oil, so this really helps out a lot. Um, 
Subscriber sent it to me, I'm sure, from Amazon. I have no idea who sent it to me. There was no note, no nothing. Nobody emailed me. Nobody told me they're sending me. Uh, let me know who you are. Who sent me this funnel? And thank you. Echo, Boba's gonna be five years old this week. Here is the week back. I'm home now. I actually uh, gave my GT to... Skidoo. This. Obviously the shadow in there. <laughs> you can see the shadow. Um. Oh. How I took uh, a motor. Use some super clean. Got the dash completely clean. Remove the um, glass, plastic, whatever the the deflector shield. Captain, the deflector shields are failing. Anyway, so uh, I figure I'd, instead of the duct tape that I had keeping the deflector, deflector shield, the windshield <laughs> um, secured on there, I figured I'd make it a little bit more sturdier. So I'm going to use some uh, silicone and put a slight bead along here. All the tabs are gone from there, so this is the only way it's holding it up. This is the same way that cars hold windshields on there. Silicone. So this ought to be okay. Uh, I will put drive a couple, uh, three self-tappers in there to keep the front part secured to the hood. Drove some self-tappers in there. Now this is solid. Windscreen is definitely on there well. That's that. Uh, gotta get a glue gun and uh, go around there a little bit. Uh, I put some silicone underneath it, holding it down with some duct tape until it cures. Then we'll wait for a glue gun. While we're waiting, you guys remember this thing here? So I think I know why that the guy threw this out. As you know, I picked this off the street uh, near my house and it's one of my favorite Echo GT2000s. These things work great. Anyway, when you, I filled up some gas and the primer bulb is cracked. So I think that's why they got rid of it because it was leaking. So I'm gonna change the primer bulb real quick. It's super easy. Super easy to change a primer bulb off of a weed whacker. I don't know what accent that is. I believe I was trying to go for Irish. Let's see what happens. But sometimes it sounds a little bit Scottish. Just take that plate off. Take this crappy, broken... Primer bulb out. Got a replacement here. This one looks a little bigger, actually. Yeah, then it fits. If it fits, you must acquit. Wait. The glove fits, you must acquit. I don't know. I don't think that rhymes as much as I thought it would. Sons of bitches. If the glove don't fit, you must acquit. That's what it was. Hello, McFly. There we go. Scott will line up with the holes.
wall. Glue gun. Cordless. Let's go! I apologize for the dirtiness of my display area. But it's a damn garage. It's not supposed to be squeaky clean, okay? Okay. Anyway, this is from Tiswall. Same guys that uh, sent me a um, solder station. You guys remember that video? You guys got to watch my videos, man, of uh, products, stuff you could use. Anyway, same guys that made my solder station. They sent me a glue gun. Uh, charging base, instructions, glue gun itself, glue sticks, and a uh, USB-C charging cable, all in this box. So, there it is. That's what it looks like. Your typical glue gun, you know, they sell cheap glue guns with the cord, but this is cordless, so you don't have to worry about the cord. You just pick it up and go, you know what I mean? Uh, here's where you charge it, right? And uh, you can plug the USB-C into here, the base, and you can charge it by standing it up like that. I think I would rather have that than... Or you can plug it in directly, you know what I mean? You guys know what I mean, right? Uh, I don't know if this is charged already, see? So let's turn this on. So, it would be helpful if you had a light. Oh, nope. Or a gauge to tell you it's on. How do I know it's on or not? Oh, here we go. Got the light. And it says red, meaning I think I should charge it. So, I'm going to put this on the charger base. And uh, we'll see how long it takes to uh, charge it. So, I plugged it into my charging station where I charge everything I have here into a USB-C cable. That blue light comes on. That red light means it's charging. I guess when it's green, it's good to go. So we'll come back when this is fully charged. So I read the directions and I was wrong. So you press the on button for three seconds. And what happens is the red light comes on pure, uh, for 15 seconds. Over here, you saw it just went straight to green. So it was fine. It just turns red when you turn it on for a few seconds for preheating. So now it's green, so it's ready to go. We just take this glue stick and shove it into the back of the hole, and then it heats the glue stick. You just trigger down to have the glue come out. It's really easy. Typical glue stick. Stick it in the hole. That's what you said. And uh, let's try this on the snowmobile. Let's rip this stuff off. And I'm just going to seal these cracks is what I'm doing. And it also helps to um, hold down the thing while the silicone dries too. So it's, uh, it has four LED bulbs here to show you where you're sh uh, shooting. Because it's not heated up just yet. So I think we press the trigger. Ah, and it sucks it in, see? How oh, cool. So I'm just gonna seal this crack right here. Ooh, there it is. It comes out very clear. It's self-feeding. There's a little motor in here. And I'm filling up these cracks really well. And this is a lot of fun. Look at that. That looks great. I'm going to lay it on thick, man. Uh, I will say that this light is not very bright at all. You can barely see it. But I think that the way this comes out like this, it's so cool. This is one fancy glue gun. And you know what? I use glue guns quite often for projects of, uh, you know, sealing 
plastic and it's just perfect for fixing like cracks in plastic and stuff you know we work on lawn tractors so much almost always on a used tractor we get there's like a cracked hood or something and you know what oh it's still coming out i thought i thought maybe we didn't have any more yep i think it's it's done with the glue stick so you guys get the picture it's really cool and look it's still green see so it was the battery was well charged i just didn't know how to use it you see what happens when you use instructions This thing worked out great. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I wish the LED light was a little stronger because, you, you know, it's really not there. <laughs> but it works great. I used a lot of sticks. Um, I want to say I used about eight of them and uh, just basically got all the cracks. And in the high tension areas where the plastic was bumping up, you know, I tried to hold it down while it dried, but it, take, it took, so, takes a little while to get it to dry. So I put a couple of holes in there, put some zip ties to hold it down, and then filled in the cracks with the glue. I mean, it, it's, it's held on really well. Look, after it's dried, it's like hard plastic. It's really secure. I love it. I think it's great. Mask this off. As long as you can still see a little bit of the formula, I don't care. <laughs> Good enough. So how about this Tiswall cordless glue, uh, glue gun, huh? Pretty cool. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want one. It's really cool. I'm sure you guys could use it in your garage for some project that you said, oh, I wish I had that glue gun that Henry was using that day. It's really cool. So that's it. That's a pretty good repair for a pretty trashed up hood for the snowmobile. You know what I mean? I'm not going to go nuts. You know what I mean? I just want to make it look better than before and have it functional too. The hinge is now adhered onto the hood so I can open and close the hood. And also the windshield now is securely placed on there. Not the prettiest repair job ever, but it's functional. And we try to make it as cosmetically pleasing as possible, closest to original. As you guys know, we also fixed my steering uh, for the skis. So the next thing I got to do is A, fix the fuel pump, the fuel delivery system. I've got like three big holes in the gas tank. I'm going to try to plug those up. Uh, 
get a primer mechanism so I can prime the uh, mixed fuel through into the carburetor and so that it starts easily. Right now it's like impossible to pull. You gotta pull like 30 times for it to start. So uh, the primer system is, is messed up. So I gotta fix that. And then two, we just gotta wait for some snow. <laughs> We're in the heart of summer right now. So I've got some time. Thanks a lot for joining me on another episode of the Snowmobile. Also reviewing some great products like the Tiswall glue gun. Really helped out on this project big time. Found that weed whacker. I mean, every day it's an adventure and sold my PYT 9000. Lots of stuff happening in a period of, uh, it took me about five days to do this video. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Oh, shit. That's cool. It's a mini lamp for emergencies. And if you turn it all the way down, it has a flickering so that it simulates burning fire. It has a grommet here where you can charge it internally. And you can charge your phone with it too. It's an old school rustic look. If you guys want to go check out an Arsley emergency camping light with bright white LED light, or if you want a feel of being out in the wilderness, you have the flickering mode. Have power when you need it and light when you need it. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys are interested. time on, on mowers and blowers later <laughs>